Alrighty. I've uh, cleaned my saw up. She's been out sitting out here on the porch all summer. So it, uh, the blade, I coated it really well with uh, mineral oil last year. And I ran some sandpaper along the blade. Remember, always come in from this side if you're going to do something like that. Throw a little bit of gunk on there. I'm coming in on the back side of the blade, so there's not there's no chance of it hurting me. I'm keeping my finger away, and when I cleaned it heavily with the sandpaper, I used a block of wood hold against it with the sandpaper uh, and I'm just going to cut a couple pieces of wood with it. just to clean off any a little bit more of that gunk and then I'll bleach it all again and clean it up because uh, clean meat saw is a happy meat saw. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just getting cleaned up. Wipe everything down with some bleach. A little toothbrush. And get in the nooks and crannies. Give her a really good bleaching and cleaning. And then uh, we're ready to cut meat. Alrighty, here we are out in my little workshop. And as you can see, there's the, uh, the box, my hanging box, with my, uh, my pig and my deer hanging. There's the piggy. I think I'm going to cut below the bacon and the shoulder, and I'm going to separate that piece hanging in here. And then I'll cut it again up here above the bacon again into a third piece. Makes it a lot easier for me to get it in and out. I'm going to put it on the table. I'm going to parts it up a little smaller. And then I will proceed out to the meat saw and cut it into respectable chunks and chops and things. And then we'll take it into the kitchen. And that's where Bev and I will start to uh, cut and wrap and getting it all ready to go in the freezer. Bit of blood and yuck down in there. I just want to get uh, a piece of paper for it to fall on. If it happens to fall, I'm going to park there now. And I'm just going to hack at that spine a little bit and just get an arm under there. nice bite sized piece and it's a good thing is it's not frozen it's not frozen all the way it's chilled definitely chilled uh, but I know I've got a couple of probably three really nice days last week of five degrees what and whatnot so I'm, I'm pretty confident that it'll be nice and tender meat we got the, the deer Deer's hanging in there. That'll be the next piece we get processed. First we'll get the pig going. And then all the grind will be done later. And we'll make some really nice sausages pairing the two up. But uh, there's our, our first chunk there. I think I'll take him right out to the saw. Cut them down the middle, take the uh, legs off, get the shoulder 
There's some, a couple nice big chops up in here, some nice ribs. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a butcher, but <laughs> I just cut them up as I see them and it all tastes very good. Anyway, here we are again. I, I, I'm just going to parts this into the three pieces and get them on the table. And then I'm going to take my meat saw because really my hands are freezing <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to take little breaks in between and do what I can without uh, losing a finger or two to frostbite. Because between the meat and the air being around zero, it's a little cold. It's a little cold. And if I had the energy to clean up uh, this mess I got going over here, I would get a little fire going. But uh, right now, I want to get this meat processed. So we'll give it a little, or blade a little clean. Wrap my hands around a cup of coffee for a moment, and then uh, cut it again. And you might say, oh, you're cutting between the wrong rib, or you're doing this, you're doing that. Well, like I say, I just fly by the seat of my pants and do the best I can. But I do believe I'm going to cut through here, right through here, and then that'll leave the bacon, the loins, and the chops, and the ribs, and everything to be processed out of that. I'm just going to score a little line right around here. Whoa. Okay, that's all took. It's just a good old hammer. Alrighty. My hands are cold. Yeah, I'll just cut. A whole lot easier to maintain when they're in three. All right, well, that's that piggy out of the box. And I think I'm gonna go have a nice cup of coffee and warm my hands up a little. We'll, uh, we'll get at this uh, out on the porch and uh, we will zing these up into nicer little pieces to go forward into the kitchen and that's where mama and I will turn this into lovely cuts of meat and uh, lovely cuts of meat they are all right talk to you later all right masters of all thing doodliness doing doodly masterful things uh, let's see here yeah, I think that looks good well I look good anyway I got the center portion of our pig ready to buzz up into a bunch of pieces, bacons and all that fun stuff. And uh, I've already done the shoulder and the hind. They're on the kitchen table now. And Bev and I will be soon tearing into those. Uh, but first I gotta separate, cut this baby in half real nice and neat. And then I'm gonna do my ribs, bacons, and chops, all the all, all my favorite parts. I do like my saw. And my rib. There, be all my chops. Right on through. Whole nice big line. That right there 
is a mountain of goodness. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll go inside and uh, do the bacons and all that fun stuff. What you doing, Papa? Cutting the bacon off the ribs. show you that I buy this roll and it's like butcher wrap it's butcher paper but I get it I got this at Sam's Club in Ohio and it's not there's no plastic on it or anything like that it's just really heavy paper but it works really well for bone as bone guard I wrap my chops in this paper make sure first. that no bone or sharp edges of bone because when you have a meat saw the bones are really sharp edges and they are not kind to uh, vacuum seal bags and I you know because we only do this once a year I forgot and already ruined the first bag because I forgot to bone guard the chops roll of white but plain white butcher paper at Sam's Club it makes Excellent bone guard. One more thing I want to show you as I do my next These chop. These chops have been run through Daddy Saw. And they have what we call, what, bone dust, dear? Bone dust. Yeah. Bone dust. And it's nasty. Well, it's not bad for you or anything. It's just nasty. So I take a steak knife and I just scrape it off both sides. See, that's nasty. And we just scrape it on to the paper over here and then our chops are nice and clean. And I do four chops to a package because, well, daddy's a piggy. No, no, because Nan and Papa and I all love our pork chops, don't we, daddy? Any, no, pick it up. Anything with a bone in it like that, that's going to be awkward, to that's going to be awkward to debone. It's not going to make the best of roasts. Something like that I will pickle as a cottage roll or a ham and that goes beautiful in the crock pot with some uh, cabbage and potatoes in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to worry about slicing it because it just falls off the bone. And that ladies and gentlemen is how how does it. <laughs>